Greetings everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of some Bond Geek Talks About with me our host, the name Stevens, Henry Stevens. Everybody, how do you do? Hope you're enjoying a good Bond film, a good Bond book, a good Bond video game, a good James Bond, whatever makes you part of this glorious fandom, everybody. How do you do? <laughs> I'm not lasting long, I'm already in hysterics, everybody. I'm already in hysterics because today we're going to discuss the 20th James Bond film, the celebration film of what of the 40th anniversary Pierce Brosnan's last film and kite surfing a tsunami spectacular die another day <laughs> oh I knew this review was coming I knew this review was coming and I'm gonna look forward to it everybody but listen before we get into it everybody before I completely lose it can I ask please if you haven't already, like and comment, subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to also leave your comments down below of what you feel about Die Another Day as well, because I bet a lot of you like me have got a lot to say about this film. And one also consider if you already subscribed, click the notification bell icon as well, everybody, to see future updates and videos. And just as always, everybody, a massive thank you from me to you for coming on here and just being part of the Some Bond Geek Talks About community. It means a lot, everybody. Right, everybody. <laughs> Oh, die another day. <laughs> Remember, everybody, according to the song, Sigmund Freud. <laughs> Analyze this. Well, I will, Madonna. Analyze this. <laughs> Never I thought in a Bond film I'd get Analyze this. Sigmund Freud did. Is that some sort of weird sex thing I don't know about? <laughs> Anyhow, everybody, look. Here is my initial thoughts on Die Another Day. <laughs> Look, everybody, I I'm just going to go straight out here. This film is terrible. This film is awful. It's utter garbage. It's terrible. It's just awful. And it just literally, it should rank like low, I think, in people's Bond loving things. But you know what? Despite all that, I actually really love this movie. <laughs> I would actually recommend it more than The World Is Not Enough. <laughs> I have just lost every right to be a Bond fan, haven't I? You're all just going, right, Henry's lost it. He's just, sorry, no, no, Henry, you have completely have no taste then. And you know what? Probably, yeah, that's fine. I can't blame you at all doing it. Thank you for keeping up with the show as long as you can. Kite surfing and so and all the other atrocious CG in this movie. Oh my god, you know what? This this film is basically everything not to do in a Bond film, all wrapped up in a nice package. Moonraker, which Bond went into outer space, had more believability and more realism than this film. <laughs> but listen, everybody, look. We gotta also talk about on this channel, like, you know, my personal collection with James Bond, because that's what it's about, like, you know, my my whole, like, personal connection with it and how I've grown up with it, how it's affected me and stuff. And I remember seeing the trailers for this film when I was a kid. I was 10 years old. And I was just getting so excited, like, this is going to be the most amazing Bond film that has ever been. You can just see it by the trailers. This is going to be something incredible and something special. Um, my mum, because I was a tall 10-year-old, got me in to see a 12-rated film. Thank you, mum. So, technically, Die Another Day was the first Bond film I ever saw in the cinema, everybody. And for that, I think it does have a bit of a soft spot for me. Maybe. <laughs> but I'm going to rip it to shreds. Um, so, yeah, I do remember that. And do you know what? We actually, last film review I did, I talked about we went to see it in the, um, the Point in Milton Keynes. This one I actually saw in the Banbury Odeon. Um, I don't know why we went there, but we did. And can I just say, everybody, just for the record here, the Banbury Odin, I haven't been there since 2007, probably never will again. Um, the last film I saw in it, I think, was Simpsons movie, actually. And to this day, the worst cinema I've ever been to. The prices were extortionate, the seating was terrible and extremely uncomfortable, and still was to that day. But, you know, that's the Odin Bam in Banbury for you. But, hey, you know, that's just my personal experience. I, bet it's, I hope it's changed a lot since then. I hope it's still around. <laughs> Um, but I just remember seeing, I remember my best friend got to see it before me like the other day. He was like saying, oh, it's amazing. It's brilliant. And there's a 10 year old come out thinking, oh my God, this is the most amazing Bond film ever. It's going to revolutionize the entire franchise cut many, many years later. <laughs> 
Oh, this film is terrible. This film is utter garbage. Um, so look, uh, look, I, I'm, you know, I just <laughs> the CG, Madonna, Sigmund Freud. Did. <laughs> Oh, honestly, by the way, I'm, I'm going to just, because I've been talking about it so much, I'm going to have to talk about the Die Another Day um, title song. I don't really normally talk about the title songs and title sequences, because I'm saving that for something else down the line, and I'll explain later. But the Die Another Day song, it perfectly matches the film. It really does, but my God, it's like, it's so drilling. It's like something, please make it stop. It's terrible, but I do listen to it from time to time, you know, when I have my Bond album on shuffle. And, uh, oh, just, it's just so bad. It's so cringeworthy. And it's from Madonna. I expected, honestly, a lot more. I really, really did expect a lot more from her. But it was, that was just a terrible film. Terrible, ter terrible song. Um, you know, the title sequence wasn't that good. But the thing is, what's annoying about this film, actually, I think it starts off quite well, you know, in North Korea, you know, trying to take down Colonel Moon and the hovercraft chase, which I really liked, you know, ending with Bond actually being captured, a first in the series, everybody, really is a first in the series, properly, and, you know, getting tortured and then eventually finding he's been set up and then going after the person who's been set up, that's really cool, and then halfway through the film, it sort of like realises, um, we sort of did this in Licence to Kill, we don't want to do this again, it didn't get received very well. Let's get it back into very traditional James Bond territory and goes on of a completely different thing there. And, uh, you know, you know, weird enough, as a kid, I sort of didn't like the first act of this movie and then I really liked the second act of this movie, you know, the traditional side of things. Now it's like, no, I wanted the first half to continue. I really, really did. Um... But, you know, th there is something actually I really do like in this film. I do like, for the most part, the action chase sequences. You know, I talked about the horror craft sequence there. Um, the fencing fight and the fencing club. I know people say it's so overblown, but I actually really do enjoy it. Um, I really, I actually do, to be fair. I think it's quite entertaining and good fun. Um, I love the uh, chase sequence on the ice rink, you know, with the SMR and the Jaguar, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and, um, yeah, let's say about the Robocop fight sequence at the end, the better. But it has some of the best quotes ever in the bond series you know you can't kill you oh look parachutes for the both of us whoops what not anymore you can't kill my dreams but my dreams can kill you time to face destiny time to face gravity i'm sorry i don't care that's awesome i love that i'll always defend that the thing is about this film it's it's so cheesy and bad you sort of just can't stop watching it. it's a bit like watching a train wreck you just can't move away from it but it's so enjoyable how bad it is. It really is. How, you know, where, where do I start on the badness? You know, I've talked about the tire scenes. I've talked about, let's talk about the CGI. Look, look the kite serving the tsunami sequence. Let's just bring it up here and now. Um, even as a 10, I was like, what the? It was not, that was just. <laughs> oh, that was so bad. What, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? That is a blooming tsunami. You can't quite surf it. And I love the surfing at the beginning. Believe it or not, I am a surfer. Every year I go down to North Cornwall and I do surfing. Very small surfing, but I love it. So that was really cool for me. A great way to open the film. And on that note, actually, body, you know, just that was really cool. And sort of came to that. But honestly, it is terrible. It is like so terrible. Um, you know, that whole kite zone. It, it's 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 famous now for being how bad a CG effect it was. And it's not the only uh, like other CG effects that are in this film. It's like all well, the like the weird slow-mo. I like slow-mo, everybody. You know, I'm a Zach Shine fan. I love slow-mo when it's done right, but here it's just done so weird. But that sequence just gone down such infamy. No wonder they rebooted with Casino Royale after this film. You watch this film and you just see all the mistakes they're making. You know, that you know the whole terrible CGI thing is just, you know, terrible. And also this film is just the litany of references to the past. To the point, it's more important, I swear, in this film that they have little homages and little gimmicks to the past than actually do a cohesive story itself. It really is, I feel, a bit like that, everybody. It's it's crazy, I know, to say it, but that's, I feel, where the main focus is. It's to homage everything that has come beforehand. It's just not really that good. And it's good. It's, it's also like, honestly, everybody, with this film, they thought this is the future of filmmaking, what it's going to be like. And it's literally, I think as soon as this film came, it's like, correction, back to you turn. Um, so it's just, it's it's an interesting thing in this movie. Um, we, you know, again, we've got to talk about the gene therapy thing here. Now, look, see, you know, 
<sighs> Cosmetic surgery is getting blue eye, but this is just ridiculous. I mean, this is the most stupidest thing ever, I think. You know, I don't believe, even as a kid, I just like, really? This is just complete ridiculous. I mean, the only cool thing, it gave Zhao an interesting look, which, by the way, I'll, I'll, I'll hand up and admit this. Zhao is one of my favorite henchmen. I love Zhao. Cool, smart, intelligent, ruthless, cunning, really interesting. I really like Zhao. I'm going to be honest. I really do like him very much. So, um, but yeah, that's just um, a little bit there uh, about that. Just to say quickly, put him in there. And uh, oh, it's just the whole Gene Fairy thing and how it's like Colonel Moon turns into Gustav Graves, you know, basing it on like a James Bond character. It's just terrible. <laughs> and it's played such for cheese. It's played so cheese bad. And like the end bit when he's in the Robocop suit. <laughs> oh, God, it's terrible. It's, a tit. it's terrible. It's just so bad. So bad. It's just unreal, is it? Is it? You know, and this is the thing, actually, everybody. Let's just talk about Gustav Graves right here, okay? I actually really am a fan of Toby Stevens. I love his work. I And the thing is, I actually like Gustav Graves for being so bad. He's awesome in this film. That's how what he's sort of like. He's so over the top. Honestly, give that man a twirly moustache. You never guessed it was me, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it the old-fashioned way. Um, but, you know, again, talking about the plot of this film, this film basically is, if you will, is a bit of a half rehash of Diamonds Are Forever. You know, giant laser in the sky, you know, going to destroy, you know, well, you know, going to, you know, North Korea is basically going to win. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Die Another Day makes Diamonds Are Forever better because it's the same plot line, but Diamonds Are Forever does it with so much more conviction and more sort of realisticness. <laughs> this film makes Diamonds Are Forever look realistic. <laughs> Oh my god, this is such a bad U-turn. Oh my god, this is such a bad U-turn. Um, oh god, just, I can't believe I've just said that, but that is the truth about um, this film. It's just so bad in that respect. Oh god, um, you know, it's just, I can't believe I've said that, but I have, I've had, I've said it out there, it's out in the world at the moment. Um, and something else that's, I think, um, really good about this uh, movie, I'll, I'll be honest, is actually John Cleese's Q. I didn't really talk about him much in the World's Not Enough review, but I think John Cleese was a really good choice to replace Desmond Llewellyn, and in this film, he shows to me why he actually was a really good choice. I really enjoyed him. Um, I wish he got to do more. Obviously, he did Bond, you know, he replies his role in everything or nothing, but I wish we could have had more John Cleese's Q. I think he would have been really, really good. But then let's just bring it on to this, everybody, because we really got to bring it on to this. Um, the, the, we, I finally get my dream. We've returned to the Eston Martins, and we've got this beautiful V12 Vanquish. It looks sexy. It looks stunning. It's one of my favorite cars of all time. And what do they do? <laughs> they, t they turn it invisible. Oh my God, we got an, we've got invisible cars. We've got... Plastic surgery beyond science limits, and we've got CG kite surfing a tsunami, which is just what the hell? Who honestly thought this was realistic and cool and good for a Bond film? I ask you, just why? How is this? How did this happen, people? How? Um, but it has, it has. How, why would you want to take that beautiful car and take it invisible? Now, to be fair, it has a really cool action sequence, as I say, you know, versus a Jaguar with gadgets. Well, this is, the f I really like this concept of each Bond car, the villain car and the Bond car having gadgets fighting off each other. I still think that's brilliant to this day, and it's a really cool action sequence to watch, everybody. I really do stand by that. But, oh my God, that was just, that was just so bad. That was honestly so bad. Um, just the invisibility. And do you know what? What's so good is, I will review this later down the line, by the way, in the channel. It's really on my list of things to do, but Top Gear, when it was Richard Hammond Clark, uh, Richard Hammond Clark's in May, um, they did like a special to come out the 50th, and they took the concept of the invisible thing and put it to Ford Transfer and just mocked it so well. Go watch it, everybody. If you can, you can buy it on Amazon, it's worth it. If you're a Bond fan, go watch that 50 years of James Bond cars and just see them rip into the invisibility thing. It is so brilliant. It just makes my enjoyment of it so much better. <laughs> um, oh, God. Let's just... <laughs> Let's talk about the characters again. Um, let's talk about Brosnan. This is his last Bond film. This is his swan song. Oh, my God. You know, everybody, he deserved better. He deserved better. It was just, He's just... 
he does not, why does Brosnan have to go out in this? I mean, he's, he's not really giving, he's like, he's trying, he, God bless him, this man, he's trying his heart out, everybody, to give the best performance here, but it is just, you can't work with this material, everybody, you can't work with it, it's just dreadful. Um, and says, so, so I think he look, he ends up being dreadful in this film. I've talked about Toby Stevens in this film, which I think is fair. I've talked a bit about Zav, Rick Yoon, who is, you know, I think is really good. But we haven't talked about the Bond ladies in this film. Now, for the record, going into this, again, this film does carry on tradition. Bond women are not stupid, dumb bimbos. They're interesting, in-depth characters. And they are the same in this film, up to a point. My favourite Bond girl is the villainous Bond girl, Miranda Frost. Rosamund Pike, her, one of her first roles. Really, really good. Um, I'm so glad she got the massive career of it. She's done so many cool stuff. Rosamund Pike's amazing in this film. I, the film is elevated with the fact that her and Toby Stevens are working together. I really love it. Honestly, when it comes to Bond Girls, 9 out of 10 for Rosamund Pike's Miranda Frost. Really good. Really accepted. Now, Halle Berry Jinx, your mama. <laughs> I got, I've got a Bond film where the, where the words your mama get said. <laughs> Where's the class and sophistication of James Bond? Where has it gone, everybody? You know, in the Bond fight, the fight sequence with the lasers, it's just terrible. Just utter garbage, isn't it? Oh, I, I just, I can't stand it. It's so bad. It's so bad, you know, like the, you know, do you know, and this is the thing. I don't actually think Halle Berry's the most amazing actress in the world. She has done some amazing performances. She won an Oscar for a reason, everybody. And she really deserved that Oscar. But the, here, she's terrible. Really is. Um, it's a t And again, just introducing the homage to Tiny Run, it's like, you're not Ursula Andress, my dear. You're a, you're a really amazing actress, but you're, you know, you can't replicate that Ursula Andress thing. That's just special. Um, but I think it's just so bad. It's like, you know, when they're having the sex scene at the beginning, it's like, you know, you know, it's just all and the end sex scene with the diamonds like surely that would hurt oh god it's terrible. Jinx is a terrible character. I can't believe they were considering doing a spin-off of Jinx. Literally, I think you know, the phrase if if they did do a Jinx spin-off, you know, if Bond always says my name is Bond, James Bond, every film Jinx would have had to say, Your mama. That's probably what would have happened. It would have had to happen. I've I've decreed it. Um, let's talk about the Amo 6 regulars. I've talked about John Cleese Q, which I've been a real fan of. Um, some really interesting things for them again as well, you know, in his Q Lab sequence. Um, really, I think, earning the rank of Q in this film. I think, again, he did a really amazing job. Obviously, Judy Dench here, fantastic. Samantha Bond, really wonderful as Money Penny, in my opinion. The whole joke about, you know, the um, virtual reality, which, by the way, we've only just started to get virtual reality now. They had it in 2002. You know, with um, her finally making up with Bond and seeing his joke. Honestly, that gives me a laugh every moment. That gives me a laugh every time. I think that's so really, really good. I'm not going to lie. Um, really enjoy that. Um, you got, obviously, Robinson. That's really great in this film. Um, Tanner wasn't in this film very much, um, if anything. you got some interesting side characters as well that just really add to it, everybody. It's all there, just, you know, just for you to watch. But, you know what? Oh, just how do I... The fact of the matter is, everybody, for all I have slated Die Another Day in this review, I think it's terrible. I think it's just wrong direction for James Bond. I think it doesn't work on so many levels. But do you know what? I absolutely love it. I do. I absolutely love this James Bond film. It is terrible to watch. It's so bad. It's brilliant. That's the way I say it. It's, you can't just help but watching this film just seeing how bad it is and just laughing how bad it is and all the stupid mistakes they made in this film. <laughs> this is the thing, you know, it's like, you know, I, I, it's going to be a Bond film I will watch again and again and again just because of how bad it is. You know, I'll never say it's like one of the great echelons of Bond films. And one day when I'll do a ranking, it'll probably end up higher than some others, but it'll still be near the bottom, everybody. Thank God they refocus themselves after this film. And we will go into now starting the la you know the current era of James Bond, the Daniel Craig era. But until then, everybody, my name's Henry Stevens, and this has been some bonky talks about not kite surfing a tsunami and Sigmund Froying it. Goodbye. <laughs>